Ladies and gentlemen, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby. In today's video, we're going to show you how to solder up your receiver to the larger Darwin FPV drones, the five inch and larger. Yeah, the idea behind this is to take a little confusion out of installing something like a Crossfire or ELS receiver in one of these because the documentation form is not quite clear for those of you that are new to the hobby that are purchasing plug and play drones. So if you need any Darwin FPV products, the five inch, the baby apes, any Radio Master products, the radios, receivers, stop on in GraysonHobby.com. Uh, shop online, come in the store, everything's here, nothing drops ships. Stay tuned for some custom configuration packages. I know you guys have been asking, I've been emailing a lot for some turnkey setups. I know we used to do a ton of them. Uh, we're getting back into that, so we will have some offerings shortly with some 5 inch, 7 inch quads, as well as some 3 inch quads. Uh, check on the website, we're going to pair them with the Zoros and the TX16s. Um, yeah, and various prices. I'm trying to, trying to set up a whole bunch of different things for you guys. So. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you're looking for of any of the products we carry in a plug and play or a ready to fly turnkey configuration. Wow. Yeah. I'll just go sit behind the camera next time. <laughs> what we're mostly going to go over today is how to put an ELS receiver in here on your own um, on this drone. It's not hard, but there is a little bit, you got you to gotta know what you're looking for on this because it's not covered on their documentation. I want to be able to power my receiver with just the USB power instead of um, having to plug in a battery source. So we are gonna use the pads over here on this side, as well as one pad on the top side. We're needing TX2, RX2, 4.5 volt, and ground. So we have on the actual board, TX2 is right here. It's this little circle right here. On the bottom side, we're gonna need RX2, which is this top one right here, 4.5, which is the bottom middle, and then ground, which is, it could be that one or that one. Um, in this case, they're common ground, so you can do either one. I'm probably going to use, depending on the quad, I would probably just do across here um, and the RX2. Um, we're going to take the small antenna off, put the longer antenna on it, and then we're going to shrink tube over it before we install it. But basically, you're going to solder the RX to the TX2, the TX to the RX2 on the bottom side, and then 5 volt and ground. And that's what we're going to do there. So next thing I do, I'm going to grab the soldering iron and solder it up on one of the... So we got our Radio Master EP1 ELRS receiver uh, shrink tube with the long antenna on it. Uh, I like doing the shrink tube because it keeps the antenna from getting popped off as easily. Um, so wires are there. I've cut them down a little bit. This, for anyone asking, is roughly two inches of wire on there. Um, gives a little bit of wiggle room to move it around and do what you gotta do with it. Uh, the flight, we've disassembled the flight controller, we've taken the VTX off, and we've taken the rubber standoffs and little, uh, off here, so the flight controller's off. I'm gonna rotate this, and I'm gonna use the actual flight, uh, the stands, uh, the standoffs as kind of a solder jig here. So we're gonna go ahead and do the top one for the TX2 and then we're gonna do the bottom side. So first things first, get my iron up, heat it up. Put a little flux. This is just flux and some solder. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little dab of flux on that pad because it helps the solder stick. There. Rotate this a little bit, y'all. I don't wanna melt the connector here. So we're just gonna tin that pad there. And this is the TX2 pad, so I need the RX wire which is the in this case is the yellow one that i've soldered up here on the outside so we're going to do that so your tx your tx is a transmitting you think of that transmitting yeah. and you're going to receive yeah. and i've already tinned uh, stripped uh, the wire down and tinned them and all that so we're going to go here and i don't like wiring the wires to the outside so i'm going to move them inwards and wrap them down um now this is actually the back of the flight controller so in that case it does not matter if it was coming out the side to be a problem but in this case it's because it's coming out the back and i'm going to go down the bottom figure out the best way to hold this here guys hold on turn it this way solder because i'm trying to do this so you guys can see too we appreciate that will there you go now i need to rotate this is where it gets fun since this is darwin 129 it has a gps puck there's actually wire solder on the bottom so if we rotate this around you can see that if you're doing the Johnny Five, you won't have these wired up here, so those would be free pads to use. Um, but we're gonna go to the next pad here. We need is the RX2 pad. So again, I'm gonna tin up some pads. Uh, the, 
things here. And let's see if we can just do it without any forks on it. Yeah, it's stuck pretty good. All right. Man, that is tiny. Yeah, these are small pads. So if you've never soldered before, maybe worth uh, paying a little extra money, get some solder service done for you, have this pre-installed or at least pre-wired. And that way you just get stuck with mounting it. And that's something we will be offering shortly with these. So now I have the RX2 pad soldered and I need a 4.5 to 5 volt source for the power, which is our red wire. And that is already wired to the GPS. So I could go to the five volt on this LED pad here. The problem with that is it does not power unless you're on um, battery voltage. And I wanna power this with the USB because I wanna be able to mess with it, set yeah, it up without definitely. having the quad power. That's so cool. You, you so this awesome. is the fun part here, not desoldering the other pad or the other wire while soldering the new one on. We're gonna be real quick. And it's on. And then I'm gonna use the upper ground here because I don't. Yeah, I'm telling you, I've tried a hundred times and I never can do it. It's never that easy. You make yeah. it look so easy. Yeah, that I should have put a little flux on that actually because that was a little bit there. Just get the tack. Tin my iron again. Yeah, way better. And then we're gonna go heel. And this is tedious, guys. So if you've never done this before, it does make it. Uh, Somewhat difficult, so maybe look into an S plus configuration that's a plug-in. That did not solder very well, actually. There we go, I like that. I like shiny solder surfaces. I don't like dull and I don't like seeing the wire. Now I'm gonna turn this back over and flip it around. And there, and I usually, what I normally do, I like to take the wires here and just do it like, you know, have to go crazy but i like twisting them up because that way you don't have a random wire that's going to grab on something if you do it like that oh, this also looks really pretty yeah it makes it look clean so you can do that and then you're just going to mount your antenna you can see like i did on this one here um this one has the same receiver in it it's just kind of tucked in there in the backside. i don't know if you can see it there mm -hmm. and then i ran the wire down and on the arm and that's all i did um, it does come with little antenna tubes. If you want to get fancy, you can actually mount it like the Immortal T's back here. But I like having the antenna out away from the center mass area. Uh, just seems to get better signal for me. So mm -hmm. to each their own on that one. But that's the solder up part here. And if you guys are, again, if you're doing the Johnny 5, same flight controller. Um, so with the Johnny 5, you won't have to worry about the GPS puck. So you'll have very direct access to these pads right here. So you could literally just do the RX2 up here, the 4.5 here, the ground here, without having to worry about the extra GPS wires in the way, and then the TX2 up here, it's those pads. Um, and at the end of the day, if you still have a free sky based receiver with just SBUS, plugging in there is gonna make life a lot easier. Uh, there is a pad on these as well. Um, if you're doing PPM, Spectrum, or IBUS to bridge, that's shown in the documentation on this here, this little bridging here. So out of the box on the plug and plays, they are bridged the two of the three pads, the center and the left or closest to this connector is bridged. If you were running iBus for some reason, if someone still has that, um, or Spectrum, again, if someone still has that, um, then you would bridge the other two. Guys, if you wanna cheap out on it, go for it. Just spend the money and get a Radio Master. Call it a day. All right, guys. So I'm thinking if you watch this video to this point now, um, you did need to help with installing the receiver. If the rece uh, the video, if you still have questions or anything, please comment below, and then we'll try to do more tutorials for this kind of stuff uh, in the future. But again, uh, hopefully this helped. It was a little quick and dirty video to understand how to install the ELRS or Crossfire style receiver into one of the larger Darwin plug and play drones. A long range cruiser. Um, now, granted, you can still freestyle with it for the most part if you want. Flips, rolls, all that. It's not like it's stuck like a DJI and boring as crap. Um, these are actually still fun to fly, but it does have the GPS puck in it for distance flying. It, uh, the way this one's configured, um, power to weight ratio and is not quite as good as, say, a regular 5-inch, in my opinion. Still very powerful, um, but it's designed to be a little more efficient. Guys are claiming up to 15, 14, 15-minute 15 flight times with... 15 to 1600 milliamp four cell batteries. I haven't personally tested that much. 
uh, endurance flight time on that. I usually just fly my standard three, four minute flights and cut the battery done. Um, but with this one, I can imagine the way how it does sip the battery with amp draw. I can imagine this with a like a twenty one seventeen or pack on it um, to do like a four thousand milliamp high capacity pack and then fly this thing for a long ass time or long excuse me long time. Um, so do they carry GoPros? They will carry GoPros. So the, they do come with like a three D printed mount. You'll see like this one here. You just unbolt it, strap, and you'll need to strap it down there. Uh, this one also comes with one as well. Unfortunately, I don't have it on me at the moment. Okay. I'd have to grab it. Right. But they're going to have a little 3D printed GoPro mount for them. You can bolt on. Okay. Uh, so, yes, you can carry a GoPro if you choose to. Uh, they are both configured out of the, from the factory to as four cell configurations. Um, I've had some of the locals run this on six cell, but it's do at your own risk. Um, honestly, I think with five inch props or even six inch props on six cell, probably be fine. But haven't done it myself yet. Um, maybe later videos we'll, we'll stress test to see what the amp draw is on that. 